One of the golden rules of outdoor portrait photo shoots is to avoid capturing your images in broad daylight. This is because harsh direct sunlight increases the risk of blowing out the highlights or creating unflattering hard edge shadows on your model's face. However, rules are meant to be broken if you truly wish to create unique and impactful photos that stand out from the crowd. And when used correctly, shooting in direct sunlight can actually create dramatic, bold portraits with high contrast, which really helps to boost depth and dimension. Hard lighting can also enhance the mood by making your subject look stronger and more powerful. All you need to do to create stunning broad daylight portrait photos is to use the right shooting angle and the correct editing workflow, which is exactly what I'm going to be showing you in Photoshop. Feel free to skip to the following timestamp on screen if you wish to jump to the photo editing tutorial. But first, let's quickly discuss the correct shooting setup and angle. All you have to do is schedule your shoot around two to three hours after midday so that the sun is at an angle and not directly overhead. This will help to avoid the dreaded raccoon eyes look. With the sun in the right position, now all you have to do is ask your model to face directly towards the sun and then have them turn slightly away from the sun until the shadow from their nose creates a small triangle or wedge of light on one side of their face. This is known as Rembrandt lighting. Alternatively, you can always use split lighting, whereby you ask your model to turn away from the sun even more until half of their face is completely cast in shadow. Now, when it comes to capturing your image, I would recommend shooting a few pictures both normally exposed, as well as some that are slightly underexposed to preserve the details in the highlights as much as possible. This will give you more options to work with to ensure that you deliver the best possible results for your client. So without further ado, let's dive into Photoshop and get started. So like I said, we're going to be starting with this somewhat normally exposed image, which as you can see, unfortunately has the effect of blowing out the detail and colors in the highlights to some extent, as is typical when shooting in direct sunlight. So let's go ahead and fix this by opening up this image in the camera raw filter and reducing the exposure slightly to about negative 0.14 and then crush the highlights all the way down to negative 100 and also reduce the whites to negative 23. Now, because shooting in broad daylight creates strong contrast on your model, not only do we have to decrease the brightness of the highlights, but we also have to increase the brightness of the shadows. This is so as to increase the color and detail visibility in our photo. So with the shadows raised, this now leaves the darker parts of the image looking a little flat. So let's go ahead and increase the contrast in this area by darkening the blacks to about negative 25. Now, a tip when shooting in conditions which require you to fix both underexposed and overexposed images especially, is to give a boost to the texture meter, since overblown highlights in particular can have a very softening or smoothening effect on the skin texture. This effect is compounded when shooting at f1.4, which softens the photo's texture overall. Next, let's go ahead and increase the color saturation sliders with an emphasis on increasing the vibrancy slider by a greater amount than the saturation slider. This is because the vibrant slider helps to preserve the color saturation in the skin tones. So we can increase the saturation slider up to a limit until the skin tones start to become oversaturated. And then we can go ahead and increase the vibrancy slider so as to pump up the surrounding and contrasting cooler blue tones in frame, helping to create a complementary color palette that pops. Speaking of these complementary color blue tones, let's go ahead and bring out these cooler hues even further by shifting the temperature to the left and remove some of the unflattering pinkish slash magenta hues by shifting the tint to the greener side. We can bring out this complementary color palette even further by coming down to the tone curve and clicking into the blue channel. From here, I'm going to create an anchor point in the highlights so as not to affect the brighter parts of our image. And then I'm going to increase the blues in the shadows or darker parts of our image very slightly. Let's skip the HSL slash color tool for now and bring our attention to the color grading tool. As you can see with the color grading tool, we can easily target the shadows, midtones, and highlights in our photo and go ahead and change the colors in these tonal regions by clicking and dragging the color picker to any point on each color wheel. Alternatively, we can also click into the shadows, midtones, or highlights color wheels specifically and either add new colors into these tonal regions on a much larger color wheel or make precision changes by entering in the hue and saturation values over here. Let's start off by clicking into our shadows and adding in some magenta tones. I'm gonna go ahead and add in the predetermined values of 292 and 16 
But to arrive at these values, I simply moved the color picker around the color wheel until I found a flattering color that also helped to make the photo pop and look more 3D. That's usually my thought process behind choosing the colors using this tool. I'm going to do the same for the midtones now by adding in some pinkish red tones as well as some purplish tones into the highlights. With the base color grade done, let's come up to the HSL and color tab and make some important color refinements. Beginning with the hue of the warmer tones in frame, I'm going to shift these to the right to remove or soften the harsh and unflattering reddish tones, particularly in our model skin. I'm also going to shift the cooler cyan and blue tones to the left slightly towards teal to build on a bit of an orange and teal complementary color palette. Let's hop into saturation and decrease the harsh and unflattering reds coming through. Let's also increase the oranges and yellows to make our model skin tones pop. Increase the aquas or teals in frame, reduce the blues so that the aquas are more dominant and increase the purple slightly. And then come on over to the luminance tab and increase the brightness of the warmer colors to make our subject's skin tones pop. I'm going to increase the greens because I'm liking what that's doing to our image. And I'm also going to pump up the brightness of the aquas and blues since this really helps to make the cooler colors in frame pop out more. Let's skip over the sharpening, noise reduction and effects tabs for now. We'll come back to these in a second and come on down to the color calibration tool which is a powerful color grade enhancing feature of the camera raw filter. For starters, let's shift the red primary to the right as doing so will help to create more of a contrasting warmer and cooler toned color palette. Leave the saturation as it is and come on down to the green primary. I'm going to shift this to the right because as you can see it helps to remove the unattractive yellows in the model skin and also brings out the colors to the desired orange and tealish color palette which I think makes the most sense for this image. Let's pump up the saturation of the green primary because I'm liking the effect that it's having on our photos colors. Speaking of orange and teal let's come on down to the blue primary and shift this dial to the left so as to augment the orange and teal look even further. Now I'm pretty happy with the colors and tones for now so let's scroll back up to the detail tab. Now similarly to how we increased the texture in the earlier part of this edit I'd also recommend you do the same for the sharpness so as to offset the softness that typically comes with correcting very bright highlights and shooting at a low f-stop. Whilst in the detail tab let's also reduce the excess noise in frame which can result from decreasing the highlights and increasing the shadows to the extent that we did earlier in this edit. In doing so however this can effectively smooth out the skin a bit too much so let's scroll down to the grain and add in some more controlled texture by increasing this slider to the right. I'm happy with this color grade overall. Let's now create a preset which we'll use to rapidly speed up the edit of our next image which is the underexposed photo. Save the XMP file to your computer and let's jump back into Photoshop. Now it's very important to show you two more editing steps in Photoshop before we move on to our next image. And the first one, which you may have guessed, is skin retouching. For this image, I used a special form of frequency separation and dodge and burn on both the body and face. For the sake of this video, I won't be going in depth into the skin retouching side as there is a lot to cover, but if you want to learn more about my techniques, be sure to check out the following video on screen. The second important step for an image like this is to correct the model's body composition, especially when they're in a physically awkward or hunched over pose like this the result of which can create an unflattering effect on the stomach or waist. And as you can see in the following images, this is how the model looks in real life and in the majority of her photos. So she would not accept an image like this in its current form. So to correct this, we can simply create a stamp of all visible underlying layers by clicking new layer and then hitting shift plus command plus option plus E and then coming up to filter liquify. Now, with a few simple nudges of the forward warp tool, we can very quickly correct the unflattering look created by the model's posture. Let's now take a look at a quick before and after, and now we are ready to quickly edit our second, slightly underexposed image using the preset that we just created, and then make some small adjustments to perfect the color grade in Photoshop. So to do that, let's double click our raw image to access the camera raw filter, Alternatively, you can simply go up to Filter, Camera Raw Filter, and then click these three dots right here. Select Load Settings and then choose the preset we just made, and bam, just like that, we have ourselves the base color grade of our photo. Now, of course, the exposure is going to be off since we underexposed this image in camera, so let's go ahead and fix that right now. 
For starters, let's pump up the exposure to plus 2.2 to recover our photo's brightness. I'm also going to increase the highlights and whites to make our photo pop more and bring back the shine. I'm going to increase the blacks to zero since the black point is already quite dark in the raw image since our photo was underexposed. I'm going to darken the shadows slightly, however, so as to maintain the contrast and to avoid that overly faded look. The photo is looking a little blue and green, so I'm going to warm up the temperature and shift the tint to the right. Now because we increased the exposure to the extent that we did, this inadvertently softened the texture in the image quite substantially. So I'm going to go ahead and increase the texture slider even more to about plus 37. Also, since we brought up the exposure so much, we also lost a decent amount of color saturation, particularly in the skin tones, so let's shift the saturation slider to the right. This, however, inadvertently makes the background blues a bit too oversaturated, so let's bring down the vibrancy slider. Remember, doing so will reduce our photo saturation whilst preserving the colors in the skin tones. Let's scroll down and make some quick color tweaks to the hue, saturation, and luminance. And now we can create a preset, which we can use to quickly edit any underexposed photo captured in direct sunlight. From here, let's now return to Photoshop and turn on our skin retouching. And there we have it, two photos edited and two resultant presets made to help you create the perfect direct sunlight portrait photos. If you'd like to download these photos for free or access my portrait preset pack, be sure to check the links in the description down below. And if you want to take your portrait editing steps to the next level beyond the color grade, then I highly recommend you watch the following video on screen now. I'll see you next time.